court. Okay, so the, I'll just repeat the question. Uh, one of the major questions is, how can we, we say we have free choice if God created us with a mission and he commanded us with commandments, do good in the world and transform the world? And also, how can God say that he's going to give us a payment or a reward for the good that we do um, if a payment is only done if we really have free choice? But if God put us in this world with the task that we must accomplish, a mission, and we're, we're like, you know, he's our creator, so he's our master, he, he owns us, and he's telling us this is what we have to do, this is what we have to do to ask our job to be created in this world, then how can he give us a payment? And also the Rebbe also asks, how can this, this service of, of, of dealing with the world, the negativity of the world, and, and transforming the world, how can that be done in, um, in a way of... Um, uh, um, a way he, he asks, he, he explains later that it says that the reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. So there must be something really good about the actual doing of the mitzvah that, that it is a reward. It's not just uh, a difficult task and a hard thing to do, which it is hard, but it, there's something deeper to it that, that Hashem is saying to us, God is saying, that the reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. So there's something in the mitzvah that is actually um, un un amazing and unbelievable. And he, that's what he's going to talk about. But I don't want to tell you everything at the beginning. Let's go a little bit more step by step. Okay. I'm going to um, bring to you inside. This is the Parsha Kitetza, um, 5751, 1991. And it's it's pretty, pretty amazing. Because you have to be able to also see things in in a bigger picture on, on two levels at the same time in order to really <laughs> appreciate what the Rebbe is trying to, to, to give us. So it's, it takes a little bit of time to digest these ideas. But let's go. Okay. Um, he says like this. I have to, I have to skip a lot because there's not everything, I, not everything I can give you. Okay, on the simple, on, uh, the simple um, explanation of Hasidus, when it says you have to go out to war on your enemies, it's talking about a spiritual war. When we come, what is this spiritual war? The, the soul is coming down from its highest height in the very high level, and it's going out into this world. So it's coming down from a very high place, of, and its source is, is in godliness, our soul, and it comes down through the different concealments, 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 where godliness is hidden, hidden, hidden more and more as it comes down throughout the world, until this world is called the lowest of the worlds. It's the darkest of the worlds. It's the physical world. There's no darker, more concealed, more hidden godliness in any other world above. This is the lowest world. Down here, this is the bottom line, bottom. So so when we, co <laughs> when we come down to this... Um, to this world, we have we do have a mission. We have a mission to transform the world, but it's a challenging mission because the world does conceal on the godliness. Okay, now the Rebbe says we have to add this. Um, this going out from above to below, going out from our high high place in godliness, the soul. When it, where it's one with godliness, it's just the same. It's one, one, one united, one with godliness, and it, this soul has to come down to this world to deal with the the, the physicality, the cover-ups, the evil, the darkness. Um, what the the world um, becomes um, like our possession, and we are consulted by godliness, by, by Hashem, by God, if, it says, if God consulted with our souls to determine whether we should even be coming down into this world, meaning our soul, we don't remember it necessarily, but our soul was consulted before <laughs> coming down, if it wants to come down into this world. So, meaning that even before the creation of the world, God, it says, he consulted with the neshamas of the righteous people if he was even going to create the world. Meaning, if there is this whole this whole desire of godliness 
to create a world that would be concealing God and God will be revealed in it through our souls working and dealing in this world. This whole idea was determined together with the souls, the source of our soul in godliness. So therefore, when the soul came down into the world, it was coming really to do a job that it signed up for, it volunteered for. It was a, it was a free choice. So initially, as our soul is above, before it came into the world, it had total free choice. It chose to come down into this world. It chose even for the world to be created. It was, it was part of a, a total decision of our soul to take on this challenge of dealing with this world. So now, however, when the soul comes down into this world and it's dealing with the darkness, the Rebbe says, then we, are, we see godliness and we see our task as an obligation. We were created to serve God. God created us, put our soul into this body. I was created to serve my master. But really, how our soul is, on its soul root, on our, its truth, and its initial truth, before it came down into the world, it had God consulted with our souls, and we had free choice, and we chose to come down to this world. So it's considered like this fighting with this world, or dealing with the darknesses of this world, is considered free choice. And it's a w permission. We had permission. We gave we, we gave God permission to put us in this place in this task. Okay, we allowed for all this mishigas. Okay, we 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 were consulted. Now, um, however, like right now, once we're in this world and we're part of this world, and we have to make choices within the the concealment without seeing the source of our soul, and we have the free choice, then then we then <laughs> um, it's a little harder, it's a little harder, but there's an advantage. And Rebbe is going to talk about what's the advantage of the soul coming down and dealing with this world, and he's going to talk about it. Okay. Let me just see what I have to skip a little bit. Okay, so he's talking more about how, you know, the soul understood when it came down into the world that God really wanted and desired a dwelling place in this lowly world and in order to be able to be revealed in a dark world. And this was God's des desire. God has pleasure in the world being elevated, in darkness being elevated to light, um, opposing and opposing, things that are covering ungodliness, opposing ungodliness are being transformed into things that help reveal godliness rather than the opposite. So transforming darkness into light is, gives God's pleasure. So every time we stop ourselves and we control ourselves and we remove ourselves from something evil or remove evil from, from, from our midst or we, we, we don't allow evil to stop us from doing something good, that gives God tremendous pleasure. So we signed up for this. Now, um, in order for this dwelling place to happen in this physical world, that a physical world will be transformed, our neshama did have to go from its true high source, where it saw everything clearly and revealed, where it took upon its, itself this mission, and come to a place where it has to actually battle. There's there's an opposition. And in order for, for this soul to be able to bring godly, God's essence into the world, there has to be a play, there has to be um, it has to be clear to the soul, and we have to have that consciousness and that memory. <laughs> They're saying we have to be aware now that if we do want to do our task and we do want to complete our mission and transform this world, we need to remember where our soul root came from, where our soul came from. Our soul did come from a place in God's essence, which is the truth, and it's God's where it feels godliness in truth. It's it's mekumam hamiti. It's their true place in Hashem's essence. That's Musa Yisbaf. So when we're now dealing with the world, if we have in our consciousness that w what our source is, where we came from, then that makes our task uh, uh, possible to transform this world. Meaning we have to feel that we're above the world in order to be able to change the world. We can't feel we're just part of the system and we're stuck and we're ruled by the laws of nature. And the wor world, r r this I'm adding, the world rules us, or we're just part of the, the natural order of things. We have to remember that our source is in God's essence, which is above, above, above the world, and and it's God's will that, and our will that we had this desire that we took upon ourselves. This we took, we we signed up for this with our free choice to transform this world. But really, we're from a place that's above the world. 
So the Chiddush Rebbe says, in another word, the newness, this 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 great gevalt, this concept, this uh, that the neshama came down below, is because the neshama in its source is one with godliness. So because the soul in its source is such a high place and rooted in God's essence, therefore, even when the soul is down here in the darkest of the lowest and the most concealed place, we are in the darkest world and we are dealing with the most difficult concealing things of godliness, even in these, this lowest dark place, in the physical body, in this low world, we're never separated from God's oneness and unity. And that's why through our soul, we can make this new thing of bringing a dwelling place for Hashem's essence in a physical world. So our soul has that capacity to do it because our one, our soul never sep- really separates from God. So even though the world is covered up and we don't see godliness, if we remember the soul, root, the root of our soul, that it's always one with God and never ever separates from God, the Rebbe says this gives us the energy and the power to be able to transform the world into a dwelling place where God is is, is revealed. So that's something the Rebbe is saying. It's very important to remember our source. And the Rebbe is going to connect this in the end. I'll give you a little teaser because this is so unbelievable. Just like remembering where our soul came from, that our soul is one with godliness and it came down into this physical world, but it's never really detached from God. The world conceals God, but it's we're always one with God no matter what. This memory helps us transform the world. The Rebbe says also the idea and the concept of knowing where the world is going to in the future, knowing where the soul, where the soul is taking us in the future, which is to reveal God's essence in its fullest. Right now, we're revealing godliness as much as as as, as our soul can can imagine and see. It's in a limited form. It's like a, the Rebbe says. It's like we're bringing. It, it's like it's it's godliness is like in a box. But we have the ability to open this box up and do the next step that will reveal the godliness. The godliness in times of Mashiach will be like this box is open and revealed, and we can see God's essence actually uh, revealed in the world. Right now, we know that it's it, we're, we're drawing it down. We're bringing godly consciousness into a crazy place, into a crazy world, in a dark world. But in times of Mashiach, we'll actually be able to experience this revelation in a, in a more clearer, brighter, uh, in a way that's that's that, that's like an unlimited light will be seen and visible. So what they were saying, just like we have to realize where we came from and knowing where our soul came from, one with godliness, that helps us do our service now in the dark world. Knowing also where the neshama is bringing us to, that this transforming of this world, drawing down the godliness into this world is transforming a dark world and it's bringing us to even higher revelations of godliness in a physical world, that helps us to be able to um, do our service now. So the way I see it, my little take on this is that, you know, they always say that it's a, I, I remember learning this, I think, with Rabbi Ginsburg many years ago, that tzaddikim, righteous people, live in the in the future. They're, they're futuristic thinkers, futuristic lookers, <laughs> seers. They see the future, right? A tzaddik can see, you know, what's going to happen in the future. So but the Rebbe wants us to do that. But in this sikha, the Rebbe is saying he wants each and every one of us to be on this level, not just conscious of where our soul came from in the highest place of godliness, and therefore it's always one with God and always able to do its job of, of revealing godliness in this world, but also to always be conscious of where our soul is bringing us, which is the highest revelations of Geula, of God manifest in this physical world. And he's going to talk more about this, the, the, the relationship of us with the world, with the arts, with the land, and us being the ones who can transform the land. And because we're from, we're, our, our soul came from such a high place in godliness, one with God, one and united with God before the creation, God, right, it says consulted with our neshama before it created, we had that free choice. Because we're coming from a place above the world, we're able to change the world. And when we do that, when we come from a place and attitude that we're above the world, we can really change the world, and the world can see it and perceive it. They see uh, the Arnashama, the, these Jews. We can change the world when it's it, it's visible, clear to us and to others. Then the, the transformation is even more and more intense. And this is what the Rebbe wants: the this clarity of the futuristic looking to to be in our consciousness, to be looking for the past and the future, and all in, in now as one. So we this it, it's a little mind-boggling because we all know that. This level of godliness of past, present, and future is called the level of 
of Sobrev Kalamin, God's light beyond the world's unlimited light that's not um, limited by time. But it's like kind of like that. I was saying, this is how he wants us to look at, at ourselves now. And he's just explaining it. Look at past, present, and future all at once while you're doing your service now. And that was explaining to us in this Sikha, this is the attitude that we need to have, past, present, and future. This is this is concepts of God's unlimited light that weren't revealed <laughs> to people how to serve God in past generations or in past years. It's only in 1991 in the Sikha that the Rebbe is bringing it in such a manifest way. It could be there's other Sikhas in those years. But the Rebbe talks about these concepts of relating to God in a way that we never he never taught really fully, <laughs> manifestly, until 1990, 91, 92. It's a whole different way of looking at, at, at our attitude of serving Hashem. But I'm going to read to you inside. We're in Parshas Kisaitse for those who came in the middle, and welcome everybody who joined. And um, we're in, in paragraph like uh, nine. Oh, eight. Yes. Wait, I, I skipped something. You know, just, I just have one quick yes. question. Yes. Um, uh, this is just so amazing. So yes. we came from a place above the world. We have to keep that consciousness. Yes. And then we have to be aware that we have the capacity to serve and transform via past, present, and future. Now, how does Solveig Cole Ullman fit in in the Seder Histauschlus? Like, is Solveig Cole Ullman at the place of equal to... Um, um, or Ein Sof, or is it below it or above it mm. in the Seder? Okay, so, okay. So the Or Ein Sof, is, as I believe, is possibly, if I'm not mistaken, is the this, the Sof of Kol, I mean, but, um, um, but I could be wrong. Um, basically, it's unlimited light. Or Ein Sof, it means unlimited light. Sof of Kol, right. is also an unlimited light. So it could be though that the um, um, there's other things that come from the orange self too, not just the Soviet Kolami. You see what I'm saying? There's okay. To that, yeah, in that, in that, the orange self is a bigger uh, concept of God's unlimited light and could include in it more than it's not just orange self. Okay. But, oh, the Soviet Kolami light. But um, so this so this the 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 self of call, I mean, like the Rebbe doesn't talk about that in this sicha, but he does talk about this concept that when it says we're bringing Hashem's um, name, the Havaya, above the world. He is talking yes. about that. He is talking about that in the sicha, how we're 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 bringing a level of godliness above and beyond. So, but we'll do it inside, so I don't get myself. Okay. Confused I'm sorry. Yeah. No. No. I don't. I. These are very high concepts. So it's like. These can be learned and learned and learned over and over and over again, and it can be understood better and better every time we learn it. So I just started learning this last week. So I'm not, I can tell you, every time I'll learn it, I'll probably understand it, hopefully, a little bit better. Okay, so let's go inside. I don't want to skip too much because there's really good stuff. Okay, um, I'm going to turn off the air conditioner. I hope the, the the sound doesn't bother you, not the air conditioner. Yeah, we're in a heat wave here in California. <laughs> it's like it's hot. Okay. Okay, so to paraphrase, we said from the source of of our soul, the soul came from such a high place where God consulted with us, we had the option of whether this even this world was gonna be created or not, whether our soul was um, going to be destined to come down into this world, and we, from our free choice, we chose to come down. So really, on, on a high, on a high, high soul level, we had total free choice. Once our soul is down in this body, we're expected and we're obligated, and we have commandments, and we're here like as created beings. The soul is in a create as a created uh, being in a body needs to do its job of transforming the world. But it has that power within it of beyond the world and that's why the memory of having this power of above the world that we're really above the world we're not limited by the world that gives us the power to transform the world and that's why though we could still get reward because the, the neshama that's in the body is struggling and dealing with the world from a place of having to um to to deal with the world but um Oh, I'm sorry. So that, that's not why it gets there. the reward is is from having the free choice before it came down into the world 
that, but it could still be struggling and it could still be obligated even though um, we had free choice. So we can have both at the same time, both consciousness. Now, the more, I guess, we have that uh, memory of where we came from, that we're above the world, the easier it is to do it, and the more we see it as this is our free choice. This is something that we're, we're not so limited. We have more power to us. So that's why having that memory is very important. Okay, and also me remembering that God has pleasure when we transform the world, that this is ultimately God's will, that we should bring godliness down to this world, that also gives us that energy, that vital vitality to, to, to withstand all the temptations and all the, and all the raging things of the, and cover-ups and concealments of the world. And also knowing that because we're coming from such a high place in God's essence, we're never ever separated really from God, even though it seems like we are, our soul is never separated. That's why um, that also gives us power to be able to do our job. So that was all up till, chapter, till paragraph eight. Okay, so now what's, what's going on is, is the Rebbe says, something else happens when the neshama comes down into the world. When it comes down into the world, what, it ha what happens is, is it, it has an effect on the land itself, okay? On the earth itself, on the physicality of the world itself. So it's like when the Jews came into the land of Israel, this is the Parsha of this coming week, we're coming into the land. It says we're supposed to inherit it, we're supposed to settle it, and land becomes our inheritance, it becomes, uh, it becomes ours, our, our established place. And it becomes a place where it becomes revealed that it is fit for us to be settling it, fit for it to be our land. Meaning we take, we make an effect on the land that it becomes a place that it can be a dwelling for godliness and a, a, a God. God is revealed, we're able to make the land holy, make the, the land a place where God is revealed in the physicality. So that's a big, a big job and that's something that we're able to make a change in the physicality of the world. Um, and another thing happens when we come into the land, it says we bring the Bikurim, we bring the first fruits. What does it mean? We're revealing also something um, about us, that we are also God's fr first fruit or God's first choice or God's, like, it says we're the firstborn, that our neshamas are really the cherished and highest and holiest thing. We're God's Bikurim, it's called, we're God's first fruit, so to speak, and we're holy to God. And we are really came before the world, and we're one with God, and that's why we have that power to elevate the world. So basically, there was saying also we're 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 coming when we come out with this attitude that we ha we're higher than the world, we can change the world. That gives us the ability to actually change the world, and the world recognizes it that we are higher than the world, and we can change the world, the world and everything in it. Now. According to how much our, uh, it says the schar mitzvah is the, is the mitzvah, that we have the, the reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. So what does this mean? The Alta Rebbe first of all says and he explains that Hashem wanted a dwelling place in this lower world and we know that the, the, the purpose of the whole creation of the whole world was for the times of Mashiach and for the resurrection of the dead and the whole world was created to begin with, for this end purpose of the creation of God, godliness being revealed in times of Mashiach and the Geula and the, and the resurrection. Why? Because that's when godliness will be completely revealed. God's unlimited light and so forth will be revealed in this physicality of the world. And the Rebbe, Alta Rebbe says in Tanya, this all depends on how much work and toil we put of dealing with this physicality of the world revealing God, God, you know, godliness through doing Torah mitzvahs in this physical world during the time of exile when it's really dark and we do have to struggle. And this causes the actual reward, that the actual reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. Because through doing the mitzvah, through doing the commandments, through doing the mitzvahs, we're drawing down unlimited light of godliness from above to below to be part and parcel in this physical world because we're doing the mitzvahs in the physical world. So we make this physical world a dwelling place. There's this unlimited light of godliness or in self. That unlimited uh, light of godliness will be revealed fully in the times of Mashiach. So it's all part of our struggle of dealing with the physicality that will be enable God, God's essence to be revealed in the physical world in total revelation times of Mashiach, which is the ultimate of purpose of creation. Meaning, the Rebbe says, the reward of all this work that we're doing now is the actual activity of the service that we're doing, which is revealing godliness in the world. 
So what we're doing now, every time we're dealing, doing a mitzvah in a, in a dark world, that actually is revealing godliness. And the reward is that the, is the revelation of the godliness. So it's really the same thing. The, it's just, we don't have that totally, totally revealed, but it's the same thing. It's revealing godliness. Doing the mitzvahs is revealing godliness. The reward of the mitzvahs is the revelation of godliness. So it's one thing. So according to this service says, we can understand what it says, that it says um, when somebody hires somebody, they have to pay them that day. So Hashem, it says, every time we do a mitzvah, is supposed to repay us, or is repaying us for that mitzvah, each and every time we do a mitzvah, that each mitzvah, each commandment that we do, in, every, in its specific details, it gives us our own geula pratis, our own liberation, internal liberation, etc. Meaning there's some sort of effect inside of us that we're creating an unlimited vessel of God's light in in our physicality, in our reality. And it's giving us some sort of a, um, a revelation or a redemptive um, concept of Mashiach times already inside of us every time we do a mitzvah. And that is that is the mitzvah, the schar mitzvah mitzvah, the reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah. So now more than the service says. Right now, like we said before, the, the reward of the mitzvah or the payment of the mitzvah is like a, a closed box. But this box is already given to us, service says. Each and every one of us has this little, or it doesn't say it's little, has this box. Um, and we have the permission, the says, to be able to open this box and to reveal that, that there's really a reward here. Meaning we can open up our eyes if we want and see the tremendousness of what we're doing with a mitzvah. Every time a person wants, he says, a person can add one more mitzvah also, and th- know that through this mitzvah you are tipping the scales of the whole entire world to to to, to good, kafschus, to merit, and we can bring tshuva uh, v'atzala to the whole. We can bring a, an a elevation, a salvation, a redemption, a, a redemptive va- value to the whole world. So this is a, an amazing thing that Rabbi says. We already know every time we do a mitzvah, that each time we're doing a mitzvah, we're tipping the scales. We're bring, bringing redemptive value, godly light that's redeeming the world, that's tipping all the scales. We have this unbelievable capacity to see the, the, the reward of the mitzvah already now, that we're changing the world. We're tipping the scales every second, every moment, every day, every choice that we make to do a mitzvah. We're tipping the scales, and we can already understand that and appreciate that, and understand the revelations that are taking place through our mitzvahs, and a, and that the whole world could be redeemed through this one little thing that we're doing. Now, um, this this the, the, he's quoting from Maimonides that this concept of tipping the scales is from the Rambam, and he says that uh, that's what the Rambam says. We should supposed to look at our our. our each mitzvah that we do as if we're, we're tipping the scale for them, bringing salvation to the whole world. And the Rebbe adds that that's the, what's the salvation and to the whole world. That's the Gula Mitis Vashlema. That's the true and complete redemption through Mashiach Tidkenu. That in which his times and times of Mashiach, especially and especially when there will be the resurrection of the dead, will be revealed this reward in a revealed way that we'll see the, the ultimate, the godly light, the revelation of the unlimited light of godliness in this physical world. Like it says, Hashem will be revealed and all flesh will see together God's light. So, now, there's, there's, there's different levels also of stages of this reward being revealed. There's, the, there's it says there's all, aside from the daily, you know, knowledge that we know that we're tipping the scales, and we're, the reward of the mitzvah is that we're drawing down God unlimited godly light. There's also what it says that there's the reward for the tzaddikim la'asid lovo. There's a reward for the righteous in the times to come. And it says in the machar l'kabascham, tomorrow you will get your reward or you get your payment. And that's referring to the Rebbe says the seventh millennium. Right now we're at the very end of the sixth millennium. We're 57, right, 83 starting in a few weeks couple weeks, two, less than two weeks. Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. This is, um, we're v- coming very close to the seventh millennium. So the seventh millennium will be the completion of this reward of all our service that we've done, of all the Jewish people and all the generations for the 6,000 years that the world, since the world was created. And it includes in it also the reward of the service of the Jewish people in times of Mashiach. And when the resurrection, because also we'll keep keep doing certain good things when Mashiach comes and when there's a resurrection. 
and for that we'll also be getting reward. Um, okay, and then because then especially then when Mashiach is coming, there's the, there's the resurrection. The learning of Torah and keeping mitzvahs will be in, in complete form. Learning Torah will be like the Torah Chadash, or this new Torah that will come from Hashem. Revelation of the innermost hidden secrets. So that Satan Mev Mistatis when I say the hidden hidden most secrets will be revealed. And we'll be keeping mitzvahs also on a very high level. That we'll be keeping all the mitzvahs. We'll be coming into the land of Israel. And everybody will be settled in the land. We'll have the holy temple. And we'll be able to bring Bikurim. And we'll be able to bring all the other mitzvahs that it's that 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 we aren't able to completely do now. So we'll be getting reward for those mitzvahs too. Now, and the Rebbe says deeper though. Now, me'en v'dugmas. We're not just looking to about the seventh millennium. The Rebbe is saying now we can have this concept of the reward also in the service itself, lifne, before we come to the complete payment of the reward for our personal service. We can already start having a little bit, the Rebbe says, main the dugmas, a little bit and um, similar and, and um, an example and a beginning of this reward right now. Take it from yad right now when we're starting to do our service okay and how it says according to what we said that the service and the reward are one thing remember we said when we understand that serving god and the reward for the service are one thing this reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself right they're all just revealing godliness in the world when we understand that we understand that us we're the jewish people we're one with hashem we are causing an effect that we're bringing God's essence into this world. Then, we, we and we understand that also, this is also because we came from a place that was before we even took on this, this work, before the creation of the world, before uh, God created the world, it's that we were one and united and one with Hashem, with godliness. And God was filling the whole world and, and right? Hashem created the world within himself. What was the newness? What, what would happen when God created the, the world? What was the whole purpose of the creation? That we should be able to serve God, at, that we will become one with God, with God through the world, in the world. Meaning that the world, which is, conceals godliness, will be revealing godliness. It will be a dwelling place for Hashem in the, in the, in the, in the lower world. So what was the, the, the newness of creation? Is that God created a world that feels and, and itself separate, that conceals godliness, and God will be revealed fully, fully, fully in this physical world. Now, this concept, the Rebbe says, how, could, could be already revealed now, when we're at the beginning of this avodah. We don't have to wait to the seventh millennium to understand this and to have this revealed revelation of godliness. We can already have the beginning of the reward right now by understanding this concept, that our avodah of the Jewish people, our service of the Jewish people in this world, doesn't just start with now, how it is now in this in the darkness of the times right now, and that the world didn't just start after the world was created and after the the neshama came down into the world, but we can understand that we're also in a mamad umatzav ha'asid. We're also standing in the future of the asid level of the times to come. That the future is like the past. <laughs> Meaning, before the creation of the world, when it, the whole purpose of the world was created in order to reveal godliness, and it, we, when we see in our existence that our true existence is really as we were before the world was created, before we came down into this world, that we were one and united and one with godliness, and we see that now while we're in the world, that we're, God is completely filling all the worlds right now, Right? There's nothing really hiding godliness. And then we also, this idea helps us make it easier for us to complete our service of revealing godliness in the world. And this is the whole purpose of the creation of the world, that the whole creation was and is happening because we're doing our service right now to make a dwelling place for godliness in the world. So... <laughs> What I was saying is that if I guess this is like something that we it's something that we could really meditate on longer and more and try to grasp these concepts. These are, are to me it's 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 new ideas. I mean the Rebbe wants us to look at the world like a tzaddik does. <laughs> the tzaddik can see the world 
as our neshama came before creation, and he can see the world as it is, uh, uh, what our neshama is completing uh, in Mashiach times. And so you wanted to ask something? Oh, go ahead. Yes. So it, it came like a freight train. <laughs> so we can have the reward now. And the purpose of creation is the dear betach tainim. I I really feel like I've I've mentally incorporated that. So while we're accomplishing the mitzvahs that we do day in and day out, separating challah, preparing for Shabbos, our voda doesn't just start now. And we have to understand that we're this blew my mind. We're standing in the future. <laughs> and and somehow that like I I kind of get that we were with Hashem because that was today's Tanya in this this chapter of of Igeris Hakodesh where we have to recognize that our neshamas agreed and came down we're on a mission so the dear betach Tanya makes sense that every day we're doing. So now the Rebbe is saying that we have to keep in mind that our voter didn't just start now, but it's we have to keep in mind that past, present, and future are are one because ain't Odin Milvado, there's nothing here but Hashem. Um, and that makes it easier for us to to do our work, <laughs> to reveal godliness, <laughs> godliness, yeah. And and somehow that is schar mitzvah mitzvah, like like it's a it's a it's like it's a compressed. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'll read it. I'll read, I'll read it to you again. I'll read it to you in the other group again. One just one. Okay. Um, he says like this. The avoid of the Jewish people in this world, it doesn't just start as it is now in, in the present, how we are now, after the world was created, after Anishama came down to the world. That's just a limited vision, okay? That's 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 just a snippet of what's going on. We we can see that our Voda really is how it is in the situation of how it is in the future, La Asid Lava and the times to come. That that the La Asid Lava, the times to come, are similar to what it was in the past. Ah, that we in the past before the world was created that for why the world was even created that what was what was visible in the past what what, what can we learn about the future from the past that already in the past was re revealed that the jewish people their whole existence their true existence was before they came down to the world was that they were one with godliness one with hashem our neshama was one with god and and it's apparent now in this world that uh, that hashem really is filling the whole world because we're conscious of that. When we're conscious of that, we we can be, you know, we learn Hasidus and we can be aware that really the world doesn't cover up godliness and it's all God. Hashem is revealed in the whole world, right? We do mitzvahs, we're revealing Hashem in the entire world. So that's bringing the past into the present. And through this, knowing about where our neshama came from and how it is affecting the world and changing the world and revealing God, we're able to do our kavana what the whole world was created for, which is our, um, to bring godliness, make a dwelling place for Hashem in the world. So there is, is time, past, present, and future all together. The whole, the whole world, why was it created, was to reveal godliness in the future. And that's being done through the knowledge of understanding of the past. So, and that's the whole purpose of everything. I why think I just got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hopefully. Wow. Because every moment, Every moment is the future unfolding. Like every moment, like this, this, like when I didn't get it a few minutes ago, that's now the past. And now you explained it again. And like, it's now the future. Like it's not the future right now, but it, it was the future a minute ago. Does that make sense? Yeah, but, well, uh, it, 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 without looking at it in terms of what a past, present, future and times, look at it, that was saying, look at it in terms of concept. The concept of the whole creation of the world was, if we're aware of that concept of why the world was created, and we're aware of it now, while we're doing it, while we're while we're bringing godliness into the world, that makes it easy to actually reveal 
the future right now. That the whole purpose of creation. So, but so if we're dealing with the concept of why we're here and why the world was created, we can have past, present, and future simultaneously. So that's wow. That's ever wants us to live like Tzadikim, I guess, and be in past, present, and future all the time. But that's having the understanding that it's all one thing. Yes. So revealing godliness, unlimited godliness in this finite. Wow. That, that's crazy world. That just doesn't really conceal God. God is really here everywhere. It's not. It's not really anything. It's not really hiding. We're we're able to reveal godliness every second, all the time. Yeah, and Beautiful. redemption to the world at every second through each and every deed. So that's the, that's the end of paragraph ten. Yes, <laughs> there we keep going. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, so the Rebbe says when, when, when we have this concept or we have this understanding, then we can do our service in a way of isyashvus, in a way of calmness more, in a way of, of that it's apparent while we're doing our service of God now, Hayom during the during our time now, our physical reality as it is now, it's apparent in the Jewish people that through them the world, the state of the world is really in a state of what it was before the creation. Like we said before, we can remember that the whole purpose of creation was to elevate it, and and that the whole purpose was to elevate it to the state of the future. So we can, when we have this, we can do everything and we're more calm because we're aware of the past and we're aware of the future right now. That's, wow. Yeah. Therefore, the Rebbe says, when we're doing our dealing with the world, which is like called going out to war, it's with, from within a knowledge and an understanding and appreciation of the truth of the matter, that really, there is nothing opposing godliness. <laughs> there is nothing really that's really, really concealing godliness. It's all godliness, just God's plan to make a concealment so that we can overcome it. So it's not a true reality of concealment. It's not a true opposition. There's no true opposition. There's nothing really, really that's stronger than God. Or, uh, right? <laughs> so when we know that, nothing really can stop God from being revealed. That's that's revealing godliness. That's why it says that the situation that we're in is al oivecha. We're above our enemy. It doesn't say go to war with your enemy. It says go to war over your enemy because we're above them. And the whole tachlis and matar, the whole purpose is that that Hashem will give them into our hands. Meaning the whole purpose is that we should go out to war. Meaning to to show that we're above the world and that the world that Hashem is going to give our enemies into our hands. They're not going to be able to stop us. And not only that, we'll be able to take the spoils of the war. So what's the spoils of the war? The spoils of the war, the Rebbe says, is the holy sparks that are hidden in the world that we are elevating when we're dealing with the physicality of the world. We're revealing something in the world that wasn't revealed before. So there's a, a newness of this godly sparks being elevated and revealed. So we're fixing the world in a way that, that what you know, we're bringing godly lights from, I don't know if I have energy to go into this, but we have the lights of godliness that, we're bef- bef- that weren't able to create a finite physical world because there were such high lights on the, and they kind of, sh- it says they shattered and they, they didn't, their energy was just dispersed. So we're, we, through dealing with the world, we're elevating all this energy and we're revealing that God is godly light even beyond all that energy that was, and godly light is now able to actually be in the physicality of the world without the world being shattered or the lights having to be, you know, the world is, manages to exist as a separate world, and yet it doesn't oppose or conceal godliness. So that's the newness of dealing with the world the way we are, which is, it's a crazy concept that you can have a world that seems separate and is separate, and yet it's not separating and it's not stopping us because we see godliness, we see through everything. Okay, I guess with, you know, <laughs> the virtual realities and all the crazy, you know, technology that we have today, this makes more sense than it would a hundred years ago. That we could see a world, but it's not really, it's not really, an, um, it's there, it's a reality, but it's not really, it doesn't have any ability to, to stop us from seeing the real truth of everything. Okay. One more question, please. Yeah. So you mentioned that we, as Yidden, have, with the Purim, we, we are the literal Bikurim, Mamish, right? Yes. Yeah. So, are we the Bikurim that um, came from Tohu that 
No. The vessels. No. No. Before everything, no. before the 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 initial creation of the first uh, revelations of any light, and before before the first tzimtzum, before anything, God in His essence, uh, our neshamas are part of part of one, united with God's. He's going to go into that a little bit more. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. This so is the main thing that ever says the Iker. Is that we should do our service of Hashem in a way of calm. The Rebbe says, do it in a settled way. Don't get too anxious. <laughs> I guess you know we would be at a, a generation of full of anxiety. And <laughs> he says the world's going to get close to times of Mashiach. We're going to get a little bit more hyper. So he says we can do it um, with Menucha, with these yashvas. No calmness. Keep shooting, the Rebbe says. Like, like really, technically, like in a physical way, not just in concept, okay? We should have menuchas and nefesh, our soul should be calm, and our body, menuchas and our body should be calm. And through this, that Hashem gives each and every Jewish person everything they need, meaning in a physical reality of the world, we should have everything we need, um, in a way of abundance, not just, you know, we shouldn't be in, in I, I like to call it, the says we're not supposed to be in survival mode, we're in abundance and in a way of like we don't have to worry and be anxious about the details of like things like you know how we're going to eat or how we're going to survive um, and we, we were able to get from God's plentiful open holy hands abundance the color starting there it says um, this is a necessity there it says to be in this have this abundance in order to even do the service itself to do our avoda not even as a reward. We're not saying, try ask, the Rebbe says that we, we don't have to have abundance and wealth and everything we need just to be able to get our reward. We need abundance and wealth just to get through, <laughs> to be in a state where we don't have, um, uh, we don't have uh, things limiting us and we're able to do our service in a complete full way. Like the Rambam Maimonides says, when it comes to all the, the, the physical things that we'll have in the times of uh, Mashiach, it says that Hashem promises us, and he's quoting from the Maimonides, that God is going to take from us all the things that are stopping us from doing what we need to do. Like he'll take away holy, he'll take away sickness, he'll take away war, he'll take away hunger, and he'll take away all those things like that, like those things. The Yashpil will give us all the goodness that um, that we want, want to do, they, that strengthen us, that give us the ability to keep Torah in a way of, of, of satisfaction and peace and lots of money and lots of silver and gold. Okay, aside from, amen, amen, amen. Uh, yeah, aside from all this, this is just to get. This is just to do our service. The Rebbe says we need a tashlum uh, sachar, uh, a reward or a payment, right? Like we did our work. We t- we right. We had that free choice. We took it upon ourselves. So God has to pay us our our a tashlum, our payment. Like it says, a person who, who hires a worker, he has to pay him on the same day. On his day, he's supposed to pay him his, his wages. So the Rebbe says, oh, what's our wages that God has to give us? Not just the spiritual wages, not just, you know, even unlimited lights that we're, we're, we're drawing down upon us, but even a physical um, payment similar to, and what will be similar to the reward, the physical reward that we'll have in times of Mashiach where it says, then in times of Mashiach, and the Rebbe quotes it again, there won't be wars, and there won't be hunger, there'll be so much goodness in the world, everything will be in abundance, all the pleasures, all the delights will be in pleasures, it will be uh, abundance like like dust, like just like there's dirt, there'll be pleasurable things all over the place. And this goodness and this pleasure is also in the physical realm. And, and the Rebbe puts in quotes, in the parentheses, which is very good to note, that the physical abundance will be as a result of the spiritual unlimited lights of godliness that are revealed. So there's so much spiritual abundance of God's unlimited light, therefore there'll be a lot of abundance physically. Okay, then there ever connects it to the month of Elul. But I think we're, I think maybe we'll have to uh, finish this probably next week. Let me just see what time it is. Uh, yeah, I already did an hour, I'm sorry. But it was a uh, very, very strengthening. But um, he connects it to Elul, so uh, uh, the, and he connects it to marriage. So, um, and the, he he brings more about the the futuristic relationship that we all have, and how 
we bring to what's the, well, the marriage of the Jewish people with Hashem, which will take place fully in the times of Mashiach, and that's connected to Yom Kippur, and right now during Elul we're getting ready for this like marriage that will be consummated in Yom Kippur and consummated in the times of Mashiach, so that will deal next week, so hopefully next week, and probably next week might be the last one before, um, I don't know how many more Sundays we have before Rosh Hashanah, let me just double check. Um, Today, <laughs> it's very close to Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, so next sun, next Sunday, wow. Um, next Sunday is the 18th. That's probably going to be the last one because the 25th is the, is the eve of Rosh Hashanah. It's probably going to be too crazy for people to learn. So, yeah, and then we'll be taking a break. So next week we'll have class and then we'll have to take a break until after, um, you know, the whole month of October. So hopefully we'll resume either on this, the I'm, I'm not going to be in, in, in the state so either I'll, I'll make it at a different time on Sunday and we'll resume on the 31st or I'll have to resume like on the 13th of November so it's either the October 31st but we will have class next week and hopefully we'll finish the Sikha and more and get ready for Rosh Hashanah and then continue so is there any more questions? So beautiful. Thank you so much. This inspires and informs my week. I appreciate it. You just can't imagine what a bracha this was. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you all for joining. And it's our Dvor Leo or Dina Leo, I'm not sure. And iPhone and Bennett, I wish I knew who you are. If you want, you can unmute. Um, I'll, I'll stop the recording if you want. Ah, Dina Leo. I'll stop the recording so that. And if you don't want to have to be recorded, I'll have to figure it out how to do that. Dinele, I need you to help me. <laughs> if you don't want to be recorded, stop the recording. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I didn't make you the post this time. But it's good to see you. Do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? Any? Oh, it's always great to hear your class, Jehudis. It's like so inspiring, and I really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, and so oh, I know, and I wanted to remind all of you, September 29th, I'm working on this. The Rebetz and Chana's yard site is the sh in it's between Rosh, the Shabbos between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Shabbos Shuba. So we're going to do a spe very special event. I'll have it also broadcast, God willing, on Zoom. But whoever's in LA, Beverly Hills, California, if you want to fly in, fly in. September 29th, Thursday night, before um, during the 10 days of Tshuva, we're going to have an amazing, amazing, amazing event, Micha Dower in Beverly Hills. And it's always very inspiring, always good to come together. It's nice to not to have to be on Zoom to be able to actually share the evening with each other. And I'm looking forward to having all of you join whoever can, tell your friends. I, um, I, it's, it's not, I can't promote it all myself, so I, I'm relying on people to tell people to please come because it's it's a special event and I don't have I'm I don't have a whole staff of people calling everybody and telling them to come so whoever wants to to do their friend a favor I tell them every year I do this <laughs> tell your friends please because they'll, they'll be happy they'll thank you for telling them so the Hashem. 29th, yeah, Hashem. Yeah. all righty thank you all the best you're welcome Bennett take care <laughs>